All right, y'all. So with this specific question, what we're going to do, as always, we're going to start knocking it down and then we'll go through and dissect these answer choices. So we got Nadine assesses her patient's hamstring strength in the sitting position and the standing position. All right. The therapist finds the patient's strength is significantly better in sitting when compared to the standing position. Which of the following is the most likely reason for the diminished in range knee flexion strength in standing? So we have A, active insufficiency of the quadriceps. B, active insufficiency of the hamstrings. C, is passive insufficiency of the quads. And then D, is passive insufficiency of of the hamstrings again. So, you know, we got a lot of just back and forth, you know, between these opposites as they call them. So we need to figure out what the heck is going on. How do we eliminate these choices? All right, so let's dissect this. So first of all, Nadine assesses our patient's hamstring strength and sitting and standing positions. Okay, all right, so that's pretty straightforward, y'all, right? We're all on the same page. You can, uh, you can uh, assess a patient's hamstring strength both in the sitting and standing position. Cool. Got you. All right. As we roll down this question, we see the therapist finds that the patient's strength is significantly better in sitting when compared to standing. All right. So can I slow up here for a second? Can I slow up here for a second? Because I want to highlight something. I want you all to think about this for a moment. Like what this sentence really means that this therapist is assessing the strength of sitting and standing. And then why? the patient's strength would be better in sitting, uh, in, in sitting than it is in the standing position. Like, what is really going to cause that? We have to be able to, like, think about that for a second because there's this, there's this term that I know a lot of you all have seen in a PT school, in kinesiology, where we were talking about, um, like, hamstring, uh, hamstring length or, or, or muscle length and then also talking about this idea of optimal length tension relationship. Have y'all heard of that? Come on, give me some support now. Have y'all heard of optimal length tension relationship? Because it has a lot to do with this right here. All right, AB, have you heard of optimal length tension relationship? Jordan, Nate, talk to me. All right, so that's really key here and understanding that, okay, when our muscles at an optimal length tension, we can produce more force. But if our muscle is in a shortened, too short position, it's like really shortened, well, then the muscle isn't able to contract with as much force. Same thing. If I stretch the muscle all the way out, right, and then try to have it contract, it also does not contract with as much force. So it needs to be in that mid range. That's where the muscle's the strongest. All right, and that's really what this is saying here right now, this sentence. But let's continue on, okay? It says, which of the following is the most likely reason for the diminished in range knee flexion strength and standing? All right, I know that's a mouthful. I know that's a lot to think about. But before you go in and start dissecting these answer choices, you have to know what the heck this question is really asking you. Which of the following is the most likely reason for the diminished end range knee flexion strength. So pretty much why is this patient having decreased knee flexion strength in standing? Why? Why are we having it? And then we have our answer choice. Let's get it. All right. So here we go. So we have a active insufficiency of the quadriceps passive. Okay. So here's the deal. Before I even go into this and start just knocking it down like I normally do. I want to tell y'all something. We have to go through what the, these terms active insufficiency and passive insufficiency mean. That way, for those people taking the uh, exam in October, next week, y'all are ready anytime you see this type of question. So here we go. Active insufficiency. What are we talking about? So we're talking about really the inability for a two-joint muscle. Inability for a two-joint joint muscle, something like the quads or the hamstrings, you know, they span two joints, the hips and, and the knee, right? So that's, it's the inability of a two joint muscle to generate force because the muscle has become too short. Y'all hear me? The inability of a two joint muscle to generate force because the muscle has become too short. 
Hope y'all are writing that down, baby. Let that marinate. Because that's all active insufficiency right there. That's what you need to know. Now let's go down to passive insufficiency. What does that mean? So that's the inability for a two-joint muscle. Same thing we're talking about. Hamstrings, quads, what's your gastrox? Gastrox, right, y'all? They're also two-joint muscles. You got your long head of the biceps. That's two-joint muscle, right? So it's the inability of a two-joint muscle to lengthen far enough, to lengthen far enough to allow full range of motion. So the inability of a two joint muscle to lengthen far enough to allow for full range of motion. Those are the definitions right there. That's what you need to know. So now we can start to dissect these answer choices. Here we go. So we have Active insufficiency of the quads. Well, here's the deal. You can even ask yourself in this question. Is it because the quads are too short to where they cannot generate enough strength? Is that the reason why I'm not seeing knee flexion strength? Or, 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 or is that the reason why I'm seeing diminished end range knee flexion strength? No. Quad strength or the quad contraction really has nothing to do with this. We're talking about the hamstrings right now, and the reason why the hamstrings cannot create the force. That's nothing to do with that. All right, so we can go ahead and get rid of A. Y'all feel me on that? Let's go to B. B says active insufficiency of the hamstrings. So, hmm, let me think about that for a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we said that active insufficiency of the quads or active insufficiency period, the definition of it is the inability of a two joint muscle to generate force because it's become too short. And so let me think, well, what do the hamstrings do? Well, they're hip extensors, right? And they flex the knee as well. And so if the patient's in the standing position, well, what position's the hip in? The hip is in more of a neutral position, possibly a little bit into extension. Okay, cool. What position is the knee going into? Oh, flexion. Oh, so now we can end up with active insufficient hamstrings because they're in a position where they've become too short and now they're not able to generate enough force. Because muscles that have been shortened too much cannot generate force. And that's the reason why, like, if you, if you hold your, your biceps in this muscle, you got shoulder flexion and you got elbow flexion, you hold it there, you start to cramp out. Or somebody can easily extend your, your, your elbow out of that position. Why? The biceps is not strong when it's shortened all the way like that. And so that's the same thing here. When the patient's in standing position, the hamstrings are in, the, in a max shortened position. And they're not able to generate force. What is that called? Active insufficiency. I like B, baby. I like B. I love it. But let's see. Let's, let's see C. Let's see what C's talking about. All right. Passive insufficiency of the quads. Oh, OK. So it's coming down to this. Let's see. Let's see. Passive insufficiency of the quads. So what does that really mean? The inability of the quads to lengthen far enough to allow for full range of motion. So some of y'all have put down C. Right. So but let's think about that. It is the is the question asking why does my patient have diminished knee flexion range of motion? I mean, y'all answer that for me. Is the question asking, why does my patient have diminished in range knee flexion range of motion in standing? All right. And the answer should be no. They're asking about strength in this situation. And so it, it, it can't be passive insufficiency of the quads for that reason now if they said range of motion and they were looking for that and why it was limited in range of motion i would say yes answer is c here baby but we're not talking about that we're talking about strength and why the muscle can't generate enough force so c cannot be the right answer all right so i'm real confident in b right now but i gotta look at d i gotta look at d because there's quite a few people that were putting d might be the right answer let's take a look at it Passive insufficiency of the hamstrings. Well, what does passive insufficiency mean, y'all? 
Come on now. What does passive insufficiency mean? The inability of a two-joint muscle to lengthen far enough to allow for full range of motion. Well, when the patient's in standing and they're doing knee flexion, is the hamstring shortening or is it lengthening? Y'all should be telling me that the hamstrings is shortening. It ain't lengthening nothing, so it can't be passive insufficient. Now, if we were going into hip flexion and knee extension, going the opposite way, then we can talk about passive insufficiency of the hamstrings. But not for this. So D is not the correct answer. The final answer here, people, is B, active insufficiency of the hamstrings. If you got this question correct, congratulations. Active insufficiency, passive insufficiency claims a lot of victims. This is one tough topic right here. So congratulations to those. For those of you who may not have gotten this question correct, listen, uh, it's not the fact, and, and I'm going to go on a little rant here. Y'all stay with me for a minute. Tune in, tune in, tune in. All right, so it's not the fact that you're stupid because I need you to answer one question for me. I need you to ask one question for me. Have you not put in the effort to learn this? Answer that, yes or no. Have you not put in the effort to learn active and passive insufficiency? If your answer is yes to that, then I have something else for you. Is there any other concepts that you have actually learned and you know well? And I can guarantee you that the answer is yes to that. Because if you've gotten to the point where you're about to take the MPTE, you only got here because you've been winning up to this point. You've been passing the exams. You've been going through the classes. So I know that you can do this. It's not the fact you're stupid. It's the fact that the system was not built in a way to teach you this in a way that you understand it. That's the problem because the traditional approach to this type of concept is to just feed it to you and just memorize this. Just memorize that. Yep, yep. Mem go memorize it. And then you wonder why you can't apply it later because you never got the understanding that you needed. And this was my problem. This was the same problem I had back in school and the reason why I kept failing tests over and over and over again. It was the understanding. Because I fell into the trap of traditional approach. So I'm here to tell you right now, for those of you taking the MPT next week, for those of you taking the MPTE in the future, it's not the fact that you're stupid, baby. No, 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 no. God know you put in your time to learn this content. But the mediums that it was given to you in or the ways that it was given to you in was not optimal for you learning it. So what am I telling you? The permission that I'm giving you right now is for you to go and freaking dominate the MPTE because it ain't just ain't the fact you're stupid, baby. <laughs> I, I would put my last dollar down that you're a winner. But you got to go out there and get it. Y'all hear me? How was that for a challenge Wednesday? I will win. This is, listen, October MPTEs have a special place in my heart, and every single one of y'all are going to freaking crush it. Can't freaking wait. Do I got some questions in here? Please explain again. No, it asks about strength. No, no. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I might have to explain it again for y'all. That's cool. I'll explain it. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure I got any other questions what if they were beginning knee flexion range was standing okay so cool let me let me explain it let me go back a little bit i'll explain it a hundred times if i need to let's check this out so it really goes back to you understanding first what the definition of these words mean and understanding that definition well you cannot apply this concept anymore or go any further if you cannot repeat or recite for me the definition and tell me exactly like what it means in your own terms. All right. So we said active insufficiency was what? Active insufficiency was the uh, inability of a two joint muscle, inability of a two joint muscle to generate enough force. And the reason why is because it has become too short. The muscle has become too shortened. And if you all remember from kinesiology, when you were talking about actin and myosin and all those cross bridges, right, right? Well, you remember that, you know, you had some, some cross bridges that kind of were like this. You know, this is my Kyle Rice drawings here now. Don't y'all make fun of me. All right. So let's say that uh, this is the cross bridge. And 
this thing should slide. You see this top piece right here? It kind of looks like a dumbbell or something. All right. It should slide on over. And that's how we create that muscle contraction is when that puppy slides over. All right. And so let's look at what a contracted muscle would look like. Contracted muscle would be just like that, where they're over top of each other. That's also known as a shortened muscle. Okay, when they're over top of each other. So what I'm saying is that an active insufficiency is when the muscle has already been shortened or contracted so far that it can't go much more. It can't generate much force because it's already there. And so your question here is saying, which of the following is the most likely reason for the diminished in-range knee flexion? Strength, though, in standing. And the major reason or the most likely reason is the fact that, well, your hamstrings have already contracted as far as they really can go at in-range knee flexion. And the hip is already into a neutral or closer to an extension. So the hamstrings are already as short as they can go. They can't go anymore. They can't generate enough force at that range. And so that's the reason why we have it. And that's called active insufficiency. Now, if I switch this up and I said, well, no, we're not talking about strength. We're talking about range of motion. Let's say the question asked for that. Then the answer would switch. Because now I'm looking for what is keeping it from reaching that range of motion. What's stopping it? And so that's going to be passive insufficiency of the quads. The quads can't lengthen long enough. They're too tight. They're not able to lengthen long enough in order to allow for the knee to flex. So the answer would be C if we change that to range of motion. All right, so that is an example of active and passive insufficiency going both ways, flipping the question, all of that. All right, so if you have questions about this, definitely rewatch the video. You can get a lot more if you uh, digest it just by listening to me first. Then go back and listen to the video again. Sometimes it doesn't sink in 100% the first time. Sometimes you got to go back, go back, listen to it again, listen to it again until it starts to click for you. But it will, baby. It will.